Hi, this is your host Sapneet Bhartia and welcome to another episode of TFR Let's Talk. And today we have with us Bob West, Chief Security Officer at Prisma Cloud at Palo Alto Networks. Bob, it's great to have you on the show. It's great to be here. And today's topic is not only of uh, great relevance, but also uh, it's, uh, it's a topic which is becoming very important, not only just in, in, in uh, cloud native work, but in, in software work in general, which is software supply chain. Because one of the fact is that we are now consuming a lot of open source, consuming or using, depending on how, how you look at it. And that kind of creates a totally different uh, security challenges compared to back in the old days where there was just one vendor monolith software. So so and now it's not just that uh, companies or organizations, developers are consuming different open source code from different projects which are hosted by different foundations. Within one project, there are different libraries, then there are different dependencies, and then there may be different repositories of the same project. So, uh, so talk a bit about uh, the, the importance of understanding software supply chain in modern world. Yeah, so, you know, I would start by saying that the number of um, supply chain uh, attacks are, are going up, uh, you know, and, and, and if you look at the industry analysts, they're, they're saying the same thing. Uh, and there, there's a lot of movement towards the cloud. Um, and to, to your point, there, there's, a, there's a number of applications that organizations are relying on and some parts of it may be written by the vendors, some parts may be uh, open source. Uh, and, and so at the end of the day, you really don't know what you have. And, and I, I would say on top of that, that uh, developers in general have not been taught how to code securely uh, when, when they've been in school. And so what happens if they've not been educated properly, there's a lot of uh, basic security issues in, in code that expose organizations. So if you put all of that together, it's, it's a challenging environment. And so having a cohesive and comprehensive approach in protecting the software supply chain becomes that much more important. Excellent. Thanks for explaining about the importance of you know, uh, software. Now let's also just quickly talk about uh, how or why you know the the modern software supply chain once again going back to the point of you know consuming or using a lot of open source uh, that is creating you know a kind of more risk than it was in earlier days i mean to be honest with you open source is much better than you know a lot of proprietary because you can go you can see the code you can audit the code you have more control but sometimes it feels like hey when you have one throat to choke you feel more secure but <laughs> that could be an illusion of security not the real security so 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 talk about how this this is also creating more risk for which developers should be aware of yeah yeah so um Open source software is something that's being consumed uh, increasingly by organizations, right? Um, to, to, to your point, um, I, I think you do have the ability to inspect it. That being said, you don't know who's been contributing to the code, right, necessarily. And so in, in the spirit of trust by verify, the trust but verify, it, it becomes really important to understand what you have. And so uh, having the, the security tools built in to the, the entire process of uh, software development, right? Where it's, you know, it's coding, it's in production, um, in, in runtime. Uh, you know, the goal is to reduce the attack surface. And if you're using the right set of tools throughout the development and production life cycle, um, that, that's the ideal scenario. Hopefully that answers your question. It does, yeah, it does. Uh, thanks for that. I'm also curious uh, because you know you folks you know really closely work with the uh, with the with the industries. How much awareness do you see is actually there about the risks of understanding software supply chain? At what stage we are, where companies actually understand and they are doing something about it, or you are still at a stage where you are trying to educate folks? Hey, you have to take this seriously. I think it's a little bit of both. There, there's you know, the, the, there's the organizations that are on the sophisticated end and cutting edge that really understand and internalize 
the software supply issues. I, I, I think there's a lot of organizations that have the mindset still that it, it's not going to happen to me, right? And and until it happens to me, I'm not going to make the proper investment. Um, it's not ideal, but I think that's a good part of the reality that we live in. And certainly there are issues that make the news every day from the colonial pipeline attack. Uh, I mean, th there's just been so many of them over the last uh, uh, couple of years. You, you know, there's there have been automotive plants that have been shut down um, because of the software supply chain. So th there is definitely a material business impact when when there's software supply chain attacks. Um, I, I, I think there's a lot of organizations still that until it happens to them, they don't take it seriously. We talked about the awareness. Let's also talk about uh, how much of this is is still a technology problem versus a culture, you, cultural problem. You did touch upon that because then we will talk about, hey, what we can do about it. We have been talking. So I just want to understand that how much is that is still a tech problem that there are not tools or tools or there is still a cultural problem where you have to change the culture within companies to embrace or understand software supply chain? So, so it's both. I, I would say it's a bigger cultural issue than, than it is a technology issue, right? Because there's, there's a number of, of software security products that are in the market, including Prisma clouds. Um, but people really need to understand number one, that the problem exists, right? That developers need to be educated in, uh, on how to code securely, number one, and that they should be using uh, security tools throughout the development and implementation and management life cycle. Um, and th this is ultimately a tone at the top issue, right? You, you know, typically if, if something is important to the board of directors, for example, it's important to the leadership team. And if it's important to the leadership team, then it's going to be important to everyone else underneath them. So it, it, it needs to, there needs to be a very clear message from the board that protecting the software supply chain is important. And, and, and if they are sending a clear enough message, then the organization will, will follow suit. Does that make sense? It does make sense. Now, one more challenge that is, you know, of course, we can look at trickle up or trickle down approach, whatever is right, depending on organizations. Uh, but can you also talk a bit about when we do look at security, first of all, the way we write, deploy, manage software is changing. Uh, security, I mean, we, we still have silos, it, no matter how much we say, hey, we have broken down those silos with the whole DevOps movement. We have security teams and it's about specialization in one area. There will always be folks who specialize and they will play a big role there. But if you look at cloud native world, and cloud native is not just about public cloud, cloud native is the way of doing things. It is also quite complicated. Uh, there are so many knobs to turn. Kubernetes itself is very complicated. So it can also become intimidating Plus, so many things are moving into developers' pipelines. They also have to worry about the velocity. It's security is another big cog that they have to worry about. So can you also talk about how Prisma Cloud is kind of making it easier for it so that you are lowering the barrier of entry so that teams can embrace security posture without having to worry too much about it? Yeah, absolutely. So Prisma Cloud, uh, has come out with uh, a, a supply chain security module that allows you to visualize all the components in in the cloud supply chain in in one place, um, and it's it's anything from really understanding uh, issues when uh, well, uh, you know configuration management ends up being one of the one of the big issues, right? So having the ability to to scan configurations, flag them, and 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 block misconfigurations, you know, those are, those are several uh, key components. Um, in, in, and, and there are other related uh, security issues that Prisma Cloud addresses, such as access control, uh, making sure that identity is, is taken care of. Um, you know, there's, there's a notion of container drift uh, and, and cloud drift. So being able to take a look at everything in, in one place and be able to manage uh, the, the software supply chain. You know, I think that's, that's one of the core values. You know, I'm, I'm relatively new to, 
in Palo Alto Networks. Uh, I'm in week eight, I think, right now. And, and I'm a very big believer in, in, in a platform approach, you know, because when you look at multi-cloud environments, most organizations have dozens, if not hundreds of uh, cloud applications or infrastructure. And so having one small set of tools that allows you to protect as much as possible is the ideal scenario. You know, complexity is the enemy of, of security, right? And, and if you can make things as simple as possible, both from a, a software development and management perspective, as well as uh, operationally, um, that's the ideal scenario. Of course, I will not ask you to share a whole playbook, but can you talk a bit about uh, uh, some some advice, some suggestions, so that companies can kind of improve their security posture. That this is how they should approach software supply chain. What would be your advice to them? There, there's a couple of ways to approach it. One of them is really understanding. So what are what are my core applications, right? You know, think of you, you protect your crown jewels. Uh, much more tightly than you do everything else. And so really understanding what, what are my most critical applications? It could be looking at it from how much revenue do these applications drive? Uh, what are my regulatory requirements? Uh, there, there's a combination of, uh, of ways you can look at it. Um, and, and, and clearly right now we're in, we're in the middle of um, some significant geopolitical issues, right? With you know, Russia's invasion of Ukraine. And there, there are some related cyber attacks on the West associated with, with the physical invasion of Ukraine. So it, it's going to depend on the organization and you know, what their risk profile is, number one, um, what, their, what their general risks are, whether it's geopolitical risk, economic risk, uh, and, and then making a decision and, okay, so... Here's the, 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 the most important set of cloud applications that I'm going to start with or, or set of infrastructure and, and then move on from there. It's, you know, this is a journey, right? Um, and most, most organizations have some experience in, in software supply chain uh, security and, and operating in clouds. There's a lot of them that simply don't. Uh, and and so you, you have to start somewhere, right? And and so the starting point for me is what what are the most critical applications, and then moving from there. Excellent. One more point before we wrap this up is I want to go back to the open source route, which is uh, open source is kind of driving running the world. Uh, and uh, what would be what would your advice be to companies who are using or consuming a lot of open source because. Uh, while yes, uh, there the, the are developers who are on someone else's payroll or you know natural, how they should kind of participate in this open source culture and become good open source citizens as well. When they do see a bug, they either report it or they participate so that not only they have a say in the in the project, but also they have very good understanding where the project is heading. So if you don't have a visibility in your supply chain, you are like, you know, moving forward blindly. Yeah, absolutely. And, and I think you hit the nail on the head, right, is having the right visibility throughout the software supply chain becomes particularly important. Um, to, to your point in terms of being a contributor to the open source community, uh, it's number one, important to understand, you know, what, what the basic security issues are. And once you identify them, not only fixing them, but telling the rest of the open source community, um, we, we just found this issue in a particular application and here's how we fixed it. Um, because if it helps you, it's going to help the rest of the participants. Does that answer your question? It does. Uh, and rising tide, you know, lifts all boats, you know, that and open source is a positive sum game. You know, everybody is a winner there. Nobody's a loser there. So that's the best approach there. Uh, this is a topic we can sit for hours and discuss. But I think whatever the, the today's focus was, we have covered most of those topics, actually more than that. Uh, is there anything else that you feel, hey, so we should have talked about that in context of this? Or you feel that, you know, we have hit on some major points today? Yeah, I think we've covered the, the main points. You know, I think if there was a message I would leave people with is that, um, it, you know, the, the, this is a journey, right? It, you know, the, the environment that you're working in today is going to change tomorrow. 
right? Even basic things like different versions of software. And when different versions of software are released, the security issues might change. Um, you, you know, we, we, in the industry, we have Patch Tuesday from Microsoft every month. And, and, and so the, there, there's a lot of variability and movement in, in applications. Um, and so paying attention to it, having visibility into the software supply chain, uh, having the right uh, advisors like my cat that's sticking its tail in my face. Uh, no, the, uh, uh, I, think, I think at the end of the day, just uh, having, having a continuous view of, uh, of the application ecosystem and supply chain and understanding the issues and being able to address them, that at the end of the day, I think is the most important thing for most organizations. Bob, thank you so much for taking time out today. And uh, of course, not only talk about the solution that you folks have, but in general, uh, the challenges that are there with the software supply chain. Uh, thanks for sharing some of those great insights that how organizations can improve their security posture. And as I said, this is a topic, actually security is never a product. It's always a process, it's always a journey. So you very rightly said, which also means that, you know, uh, I look forward to a next discussion on the same topic, but I really appreciate your time today. Thank you. Thank you for having me.